My heart gallops like a racehorse, charging down the furlong. My head pounds like the beat of a drum. My body falters with every walking step as my eyes fill and blur. My heart skips a beat each time I breathe. The growl in my voice has lost its bark, but I lie with the sound of your voice around me like the morning lark. I think I can see you, but then you disappear like a piece of my heart that went when you were stopped. I can't believe you are gone, but the biggest gift you gave me was the strength of mind to carry on. Hi everyone, my name is Dame Kelly Holmes. Now that was a poem that I wrote in 2017 for my mother's funeral. My mother loved racehorsing, birds, dogs. And I wrote that poem because I really wanted to have some of her memories there on the day that we've cremated her. Do you know what? That was the second hardest day of my life first was the day she died. And my mum had myeloma, cancer of the blood. It's a rare blood disease that not many people have heard of. We don't know how long she had it for. However, when she was diagnosed with it, it was a big shock. Like, of course, it always is when your loved one or yourself get given some really bad news. Something else happened to me on the day of her funeral. Now, I'd always wanted to be a little bit vivacious, kind of stand out amongst the crowd. But I was always worried that people would judge me and think of me as, you know, look at me thinking, oh, what are you doing? Everybody else has nice long hair and has their makeup and wears dresses. And I always thought that I wondered if I'd be judged. However, the day of my mum's funeral, I went to my hairdresser and I said, take this side off. I'd thought about it for so long. I'd worried what people would think and say for so long. But that care day, I didn't care. Having that hair cut at the side of my head on that day of all days allowed me to breathe. Now I went to the funeral, everyone had seen me and said how great it looked. I don't remember much because of course I was just in a complete and utter state and having to read that poem out of course was a pretty tough moment. But inside me I knew something would change forever. The right to be who I wanted to be. It took a death of somebody so close to me to do that. And that I feel sad about. My mum was 17 when she had me, a uh, whiter than white Kent, a mixed race child in the 70s with a father that didn't stick around even till I was one year old. My mother was a strong woman and I learned that more, obviously, as I got older, because, of course, you know, when you're young and you've got a mother that's only 17 years older than you, but, you know, in age when you're young seems ancient. But knowing more about her story and my story, I realise what a strong woman she was. She had to put me in a child's home. Um, my granddad, her dad, said that she couldn't look after me until she was able to look after herself and off I went to St George's. First four to five years I was in and out of there. No bad memories. In fact, I remember my mum and my granddad being on Generation Game. They only won a clock. But I thought she was famous. Finally, I settled down with my mum and my stepdad, Mick, who is my dad to this day. He's brought me up since I was five years old and we've never looked back. But the whole point of that change 
and having an impact in my life that made me change. As I said, I feel a little bit sad about that because I think, why didn't I just have the guts or determination or foresight to just want to be me anyway? Why did I worry about how I was thought of and what judgment takes? So maybe that's age, maybe that's experience, maybe that's being comfortable in my own skin now. But I think that moment really impacted me. Since then, I've changed my style. My hair seems to get shorter and shorter. I wear necklaces, I have more tattoos. In fact, that tattoo means something. See, I've always done things that I think are meaningful and this again was almost something about that not caring what people think, not worrying about what people think. Caring when it's appropriate, when actually that care has an impact on somebody else's life and you have to worry about them and what that's going to do for them and how you can help them, but not caring about people's thoughts and feelings about you and whether you're right or wrong, because who knows? You know, no one else is in control of your life. No one else is in control of our lives other than us. And of course, unknown situations. Now back to this tattoo, uh, you can see it's a puzzle. It has a clock in there with an eye. And that day that my mother passed away, a part of me went missing and will never ever return. However, I can start to close the gap with other things in my life. And I've just thought to myself, if I'm ever explaining bereavement, that there's no time, there's no time that can tell you that you're gonna feel better. You can keep seeking and looking for the hole to close. It may never close, but it will get smaller. Now, as life goes on, I've been more courageous. I speak to more people than I ever have before. And that might sound weird because I stand on a stage in front of thousands of people, but it's almost like a show. I give all of me. I tell everyone about my life and my journey. However, there's sometimes a little bit of separation because you still have that underlying thing of what do people really think about you? The strength of character to believe in you is the most important thing. I've always been asked, you know, what it took to be an international athlete, a world-class runner and a double Olympic champion. <laughs> it took time, it took a lot of sacrifices, energy, commitment. It took a willpower to succeed. And ultimately, if I look back, it actually took 100% belief in me. <sighs> Winning two gold medals in Athens, of course, was one of the biggest moments of my life. And at the time, having had a dream for 20 years, having tried for 12 years, I thought that was my destiny. I actually think it was part of my journey. You know, when I talk to people, when I explain the highs and the lows and the impact of trying to succeed and having everything so focused in your head, all those dreams and ambitions and seeing them slip away from your fingers and then one minute you go to grab them, you get something and then it gets pulled away from you again. <sighs> the pressures, the extreme highs and lows can make you go all the way to the top or down to the ground. Now I've experienced that and I know a lot of people have there too. However, they are experiences that you can either learn by or you can just keep them eating away and eating away. But whose life is that? Whose life are you hurting? if you just continue to be on the ground. Now, a lot of people know about my story, other than winning two gold medals and many other medals, having been in the military for 10 years. You'll know, you know I'm a strong person. 
that's never been in doubt however i'm being a human being and you know when those human acts that come in you those fighting to take control of something that you feel out of control on the mind that just bashes against you worrying and fretting and wondering if you're ever 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 gonna get to where you want to get you know those things and experiences take their toll on us in 2017 it was the last time I self-harmed for 12 years I had been self-harming on and off in that 14 years it's easy to forget isn't it when time goes on but for 14 years on and off I'd been self-harming because of the hatred that I felt sometimes in my body when it was letting me down as an international athlete. I felt totally under, out of control, not knowing what was gonna come, not knowing whether I was ever gonna get that dream, not knowing who I could speak to, why. I was getting all these thoughts and feelings about hurting myself and wanting the ground to open up and me to jump in it, but then I get out. You know, the last time I self-harmed was the day my mother passed away. But then I thought to myself, that's not bringing her back. That's not going to help her. And it's certainly only hurting me. So I had to start taking control, taking control of me, taking control of that inner fight and desire just to want to punish myself for things that were out of my control. That was out of my control and yet I was punishing myself and so I needed to take control so that I stopped. And that was so hard. But sometimes when you have that resolve, when you know what's right and what's wrong, you can grab hold of everything within you to fight. To know that you have people around you, to know there's people that you can talk to, that will listen and that you trust. That's also a power of the mind. The power that allows you to foresee your own future, to know where you are heading and what you want out of your own life. Now, happiness is something we all want. We all want to smile, we all want to laugh, we all want to love, we all want to care and be cared for. It sometimes takes a lot, sometimes takes so much to get that, to feel it, to give it. But we can and we do and we will. Now, where do you get that motivation from? Where do you get your drive? Where do you get that inner fire in the belly? That's something you can control. What do you like? What do you love? What makes you feel good? What makes you feel wanted? What makes you feel like, oh, there's hairs on the back of the neck and the arms stand up every time you think about it? you ever give yourself time to breathe? Do you ever really look at your life and think, is this really me? Is this who I am? Is this what I want? The day we can all say yes would be a fantastic day. Now we have a chance to live tomorrow. We have a chance to create dreams and aspirations and to try and fulfill them by getting people around them that support, getting people around you that feel it and believe it and want that dream too. And if they don't, then the power in you is so much better because you're the driver, you're the focus, you're the visionary. You're the one that's been successful and don't forget that. Pat yourself on the back some of those times when you've done something so good. Something that makes you feel so good. 
at that far in the belly when it comes. There's no stopping you. I feel those moments, I've had those moments inside where everything just feels right. I feel on top of the world and no one, but no one can stop me. But why has that come? That just doesn't come from just everyday living, just thinking you're one of the best people out there. It comes because of experience. It comes because of hardship. It comes because of those knockbacks and those fights. It comes because of positive attitude and mindset. It comes because you want it. Because you want it. Now we have to learn, we have to listen. We have to fill our brains with all of those thoughts and those messages that are out there. The signs that we see, the people that say something that you just resonate with, those words, those poems. During this time, I have appreciated everything around me. The blue sky, the sun shining down, the birds sing until their heart's content. I've had a chance to breathe. It's so easy when something is put upon us to feel negative. It's so easy not to see the positives around us because it's so easy for us as humans and with our brains to actually put a downer on something rather than put it up in the air and we fight and we're, because we get scared. We get scared. However, there's no need to be. Just believe in yourself and trust in your instincts. Fight for what you want. Feel the passion within you, the fire in the belly, the thing why you get up every morning. Life is a roller coaster. We have to navigate how to ride it. We don't always go in the wrong, the right direction. We sometimes go in the wrong direction. However, we keep driving towards our goal. We put fuel in that tank, the far in the belly. We look out of our own window, our eyes, just to see where we really want to go and who we want to be. We can all do that. You and me. You can really be who you want to be. You just might have to learn and listen. Take time and be patient. See the mountain that you're trying to climb and know what level you want to get to. But never put yourself down here. Always rise higher than you think you can. Just be the best version of you. And that will bring you happiness.